Welcome back to What the Flick. I'm Matt. That's Christy. Uh, we are reviewing Disobedience, yes. uh, starring Rachel McAdams and Rachel Weisz. Uh, will you describe what it's about? So this is a, a new film from Sebastian Lelio, um, who just won an Oscar for Best Foreign Language Film for A Fantastic Woman. This also looks at women in sort of an untenable societal situation trying to express their their true selves and their true individuality and uh, running into difficulty with that. So Rachel McAdams and Rachel Weisz were at one point both part of the Orthodox Jewish community in London, and apparently there was something between them. Rachel Weisz has now gone to New York where she works as a painter, but she has to come back to London and back to this community when her father, who was this very respected and very revered rabbi, dies. And she reconnects with Rachel McAdams' character and uh, sparks fly. Take a look. We all have forgiven you, Ronnie. What for, Fema? For everything. We never thought we'd see you again. Sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> and you're not married. It's important that this week is conducted with honor. It's the most important thing. Honor. This is my house we're talking about. I keep it in order. I love this movie. I it's like this beautiful. movie. Beautiful. It is beautiful. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of great stuff going on. Um, the the kind of chemistry between Vise and McAdams, the two Rachels, is mm -hmm. very very good. Yeah. Um, I like this story a lot. And I was really kind of intrigued. Like you get to see this side of of like the day to day of an Orthodox mm -hmm. Jewish family that you don't get to see a lot, mm -hmm. I think. Um, and I really bought that there was that history between them. Um, that being said, like, the thing that was missing is I felt there's a lot of great stuff going on and I think the performances are really, really good. I never quite felt the conflict around the choice for Esty, Rachel mm -hmm. McAdams' character, mm -hmm. right? I. I Felt like you were supposed to feel that, and it didn't quite hit that till the very, very, very end. Okay. And that's where it left, but I still liked it a lot. Okay. Um, yeah, I felt it in subtle ways the whole way through. And one thing I love about this film is that it judges nobody for their right. instincts or their choices. Alessandro Nivola, who is McAdam's husband in this, who right. was a young rabbi who is like, an up and comer on, on right. the on the edge of taking over once the elderly rabbi dies, um, you totally see his motivation too, and you can totally right. imagine why he wants his life to stay the same. He wants it to become even stronger within the traditions of of this community, and he's not the bad guy. Like uh, right. there's no bad guy here. Society is the bad guy. You know, in terms of it's the restrictive nature of of you know, where these people have right. grown up and lived most of their lives. And I, I love that about it. It doesn't judge either the women for any of their choices. It doesn't judge him, which I, I was, I found that really refreshing. It would be easy to vilify him and put it on him. Like he's the husband who was, who was restraining you and he's an awful guy, but he's not an awful right. guy. You understand where he's coming right, he's from a good and man. you feel for him too. Right. He, he's a good, solid man. He's a pillar of the community. You know why he wants to start a family and, 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 really solidify his status within these people. Um, you mentioned we don't get to see a lot of films about Orthodox Judaism. We really don't, and when we do, they're usually in Brooklyn. They're quite frequently in Brooklyn, like right. Menasha, which came out last year. It was a really great little indie. Um, this was this is an even more specific, you know, kind of sense of place that we get here. And, uh, and it's, it's respectful of the traditions, but it's also got this great bubbling tension underneath it as these two women increasingly cannot, you know, deny how they still feel about each other and just the, the furtive glances and the little hand holding and the, the, the way they get away. Like, it reminded me a lot of Call Me By Your Name in some okay. ways in that these two people clearly belong together, but for whatever reason, they cannot be together. And it takes its time leading up to that first kiss. Like, I want right. to say it's maybe about an hour in. This is not a spoiler. The poster is of them kissing. Right. Um, clearly, there's going to be a, a physical reconnection between them. But, like, it's it's so emotional. It's quiet and intimate, but so emotional when it finally happens because there's been this, like, 
really emotional buildup to that I, I, I bought. Right, and, and one of the things I really liked about this movie is that I had an expectation kind of going into it as to who would be driving this forbidden relationship okay. between them, and I, w I was wrong about that. It's, okay. it's that, I, you know, it, it turns out, oh, okay, so it's, yeah, I mean, I don't want to get, I don't mm -hmm. want to give too much away, but it was kind of, you start to think, the, like there's a, and it's in line with what you see out of David, who's who's the uh, Alessandro character. Like it's mm -hmm. these characters are they're real people. They're not they're not just cookie cutter mm -hmm. like villain or this. You know, one of them is the housewife and one of them is the the woman that comes in and upsets the apple cart. Like yeah, it's not that. It's it's not that. It's they have their own desires and their fears, and the the cast all shows you that in a really effective way mm -hmm. and. You know, it is this complicated relationship mm -hmm. because they all do truly care about each other, mm -hmm. right? There's, I mean, even between David and um, Renit, mm -hmm. Rachel Weisz's character, mm -hmm. there's, they grew up together, right? right? They're all because best friends. They're all best right? friends. Mm -hmm. They all, you know, had known each other since childhood. And there's a, there's, there's almost a sibling-like affection mm -hmm. between David and, and Renit that I liked. Like, yeah. Initially, I was like, are they brother and sister? I thought that at first too. Right, and it turns out yeah. David is the cousin, or David is the cousin that was, I guess, raised by uh, Renit's father. Okay. Right, it gets a little complicated. But they but, are, but they have all grown up together, and you do right. feel in very subtle ways that shared yeah. history, and that gives everything much more weight as far right. as the decisions they make going forward. Yeah, you can see why Rachel McAdams would want to keep her life the way it is. She's a teacher. She's proud of her work. She's she's entrenched in the community. You can see why they all want things to stay the same and yet also want things to change. It's complicated. See, where it left me a little bit is I didn't, I felt like it would be, you know, the, the choice that's offered is, is for uh, Esty is whether or not she's going to kind of be who she truly is or, or stay in this relationship, in this community that she's built together. And she kind of talks about it, but I didn't quite ever get, I guess I didn't get enough of her fulfillment within the community Okay. Um, to really make me feel that. Like I definitely felt that there's a, I definitely saw the attraction and, and the love between her and Renee. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's at least an affection with her and David, mm -hmm. but I didn't, feel the emotional investment and kind of the lure of what she had at the moment mm -hmm. that she was contemplating leaving. And we're supposed to see that, and I guess it didn't hit me that much. Yeah, maybe it's but, more of like the obligation, right? The sense of identity that she yeah, has, maybe. she's always had, and it's safe and familiar. Maybe, that maybe, being maybe said, it, yeah. the, ver the end of it, and I think a lot of it is on the actor playing David, nails the ending mm -hmm. like the 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 final scenes like his final scenes mm -hmm. i think were really great yeah and you're I holding your breath we're holding your breath <laughs> i think it's really well written this is based on a novel by uh naomi alderman um called disobedience uh she's got a book that i've been crowing about this year called the power which is going to get adapted into a series oh. um the power is a terrific book but this is i think her first book okay um and I think this is a really, it is a very, very good movie. In fact, I'll probably move my score up just a What's little bit. What's your number? Um, I'm going to give it an eight. Okay, I'm saying nine, so that's 8.5 from us. Is it 88% on the tomato meter? Um, yeah, I loved it. It's at least in New York and L.A. this weekend, probably going wider. So if you want to go see a beautifully acted film, this is it. Bye-bye.